the two suspects in the murders of two children in Pueblo are set to have their first court appearance in Pueblo. Nine News reporter Brianna Fernandez has been following the story for us this morning. Brianna, the question is, were the kids ever reported missing? Hey, good morning, Corey Jordan. No, they weren't. And the children were just three and five years old when they were last seen in the summer of 2018. And it's not until recently that Pueblo police learned about the kids and then found their remains. So the biological father of the two children, Jesus Dominguez, he was arrested Saturday afternoon. That second suspect, Dominguez's girlfriend, Corena Rose Minjares, was arrested just days before, and she has absolutely no relation to the kids. Police revealed nearly a month ago they found the remains of a little girl inside a metal container filled with concrete at a storage unit. The unit's owner says that she rented it to Minjares last year. She checked it after three months of non-payment, and that's when the container was found. A few days later, police found the body of her brother in a suitcase in a car, and they tracked that car back to Minjares. Both Dominguez and Minjares face charges of first-degree murder, and they're currently in the Pueblo County Jail on a $2 million cash-only bond. Dominguez and his girlfriend are scheduled to be in court today at 9.45 so in just a couple of hours. So we'll definitely keep you updated both on air and online on 9news.com. Corey? All right, Brianna, thank you. Right now, police are looking for the person who shot and killed a man outside the Denver Aquarium. This happened a week ago today, and they still don't have anyone in custody. Police just identified the victim as 19-year-old Dacian Salazar. They believe this was a targeted shooting. If you have any information, call Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. This morning, we are learning more about what led up to the arrest of the man accused of killing two people inside a dorm room in Colorado Springs. Police arrested Nicholas Jordan on Monday, three days after they found Celia Montgomery Montgomery and Samuel Knopp dead in a dorm room at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. Police say Jordan lived with Knopp, who was also a student at UCCS. Montgomery was not a student. During his first court appearance, a prosecutor said that Jordan tried to leave the state after the shooting. When police arrested him, they found a gun in his car. Police say they put out a warrant for Jordan's arrest on Friday night, but didn't publicly identify him until Monday when he was arrested. You know, we always weigh the, ba or ba the balance between public safety and, and our ability to apprehend a suspect. In this particular case, we had a tremendous amount of conversations about, you know, was this a random act or did it, did it appear to be a target? Did, did the suspect appear to know the people that were involved? A judge raised Jordan's bond to $5 million cash only, and his next court appearance is on Friday. A week after the shooting at the Super Bowl parade in Kansas City, two men are charged with murder, and investigators say they're expecting more people will be charged as well. New court documents say the two men got into a fight and within seconds pulled out guns and started shooting. They didn't know each other before this. One woman was killed, two dozen others were hurt, including both shooters. Prosecutors say the men are charged with second-degree murder and several weapons counts. They're both still in the hospital. Two teenagers have also been charged in the shooting. Prosecutors say they expect more arrests in the coming weeks. The rest of the community is still recovering and they're using some comfort dogs to help out. An animal therapy organization is offering free sessions to anyone who needs some extra support. They have dogs and therapists available for kids and adults all week long. This morning, the U.S. Coast Guard is suspending its search for four missing boaters off the coast of Venice, Florida. Four fishermen went out in their boat on Saturday morning and never came back. Planes and boats had been scanning the Gulf of Mexico for two days. They searched an area about the size of Massachusetts. Now the fishermen's family members say they think the Coast Guard called off the search too soon and are hoping that others will step in to help. I just don't know how this could have happened. We know that they're alive. <laughs> We just got to keep looking for them. We can't give up. We, we just can't give up. They say all four fishermen are extremely experienced. Police say the seas were not too rough when they have left, but heavy fog could have played a factor here. New overnight, food deliveries into northern Gaza are on hold because of Israeli strikes there. Now there are new fears that the risk of famine there is growing. A study from the United Nations shows one in six children in northern Gaza are ac acutely malnourished. UN relief workers say Israel is not ensuring their safety, so food delivery has to stop. This week, Israel has started launching more attacks against northern Gaza. The military ordered people in the area to evacuate. President Joe Biden is asking his administration for major sanctions against Russia. He wants to hold them accountable for the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. The exact sanctions are expected to be announced on Friday. The National Security Council says the most powerful thing the U.S. can do is to pass a spending bill to provide aid to Ukraine. That bill is stalled in Congress while the House is on recess.
Just a few days to go until the Republican primary in South Carolina, but civil rights groups are worried about a mailer that went out to Democrats. A conservative group sent the mailers to around 75,000 Democratic voters in South Carolina. They criticized President Biden's push to ban menthol cigarettes. Biden still won the primary by a landslide, but advocates say they're worried these mailers specifically targeted black voters. They went out to predominantly black electorates, and the FDA says black smokers are more likely to use menthol cigarettes. Analysts are now looking into whether these mailers might push voters to either stay home or push them to consider a third party. New research shows menthol cigarette bans may actually work when it comes to getting people to quit smoking. The research shows about a quarter of menthol smokers quit within a year or two when it's banned from cigarettes. It's also found for those who did not quit after bans were put into place, about half switched to non-menthol cigarettes. The FDA says a menthol ban is one of its top priorities and is pushing the Biden administration to make a decision. New this morning, a new report from the American Lung Association says children could breathe easier if the nation's power grid depended on clean energy and drivers switched to zero emissions vehicles. The report estimates that by the year 2050, there would be fewer pediatric asthma attacks and fewer acute bronchitis cases. This research comes from a larger American Lung Association report that said a big push for zero emission vehicles would create more than a trillion dollars in health benefits for the U.S. by 2050. While going full on clean energy seems very far away, this morning a new study actually shows the U.S. could fully switch to renewable energy in our lifetime. The research done at CU Boulder shows utilities in the U.S. are on track to be fully renewable by 2060. That's thanks in part to the fact that they are well into working on green initiatives, though that transition to renewable energy could impact reliability. Reliability is harder with renewables, intermittency of wind and solar being an example. There are some areas where it's easier, like with solar microgrids. The study's authors say that the U.S. would actually hit its carbon-free electricity goals 10 years sooner if they counted nuclear energy. Right now, it's not counted, though it is a large part of the country's energy sources. The authors say that as the country transitions to renewable energy, we'll have to decide if we want nuclear to be a big part of how we keep our lights on. And I came across an interesting weather fact from Sunday in China. This past Sunday, they had a northwestern city reading of 62.14 below zero, while on the same day in south central China, 100 above zero. That's a difference of 162.54 degrees, possibly the greatest contrast ever within a country in a single day. Ed, thank you. Right now, a live look from Sky 9. They are actually over that southbound I-25 crash that is clearing as we are looking at it. So that scene fully clear. We had a couple left lanes blocked off at one point. We're still up to about a seven to eight minute backup on South Bend I-25 from North Glen down towards 76. But again, it is cleared. All lanes are back open.